Hi, I'm Avong. I'm a CPA, entrepreneur, small business champion, financial contributor on TV, and now I'm the author of the new business book, Start Me Up, The No Business Plan Business Plan. Now, do you have an idea for a business? Is there a dream in your heart or a desire to actually start something? Maybe leaving your existing job and starting a business, or it could be something as simple as starting something on the side in order to make some extra money for you and your family. You know, that's what the American dream is about. Everybody has these kinds of ideas and these dreams. Now, what do you normally do when that happens? Well, you go to Google, maybe you ask a few friends, you say, hey, this might be a good idea, and what do you get in response? You usually get things like, the, that idea has already been done, there's 10 other companies already doing it, or you may be getting something like, go to, go to Google and, and find it, you need to write a business plan. And so, a lot of people end up going on online, finding somebody to write one for them, maybe buying some business plan software, and then they get stuck. They stop. You know why? The main reason why they stop is because the idea of writing a 100-page, 50-page, even a 30-page business plan is daunting, especially for people who don't have that background. Writing a business plan is like a, taking a course in itself in college almost. It's very complex, confusing, but more importantly, it's useless. Nobody reads it. The person writing it's not going to read it. You're not going to read it. Any investor is not going to read it. So there's absolutely no reason for you to even bother with one. So what ends up happening is you take your idea, that desire, that, that instinct to taste the American dream, and you put it away on the shelf. Some of you may even forget about it. And five years later, somebody else is doing what you proposed to do five years before. Well, you see, enough of that. I was recently flying and traveling uh, for work, and I was about to go and give a, give a talk across, across the country. On my flight, I met a nice woman. Her name was Karen. And she was telling me about an idea that she had. And I could see the gleam in her eyes. She was sharing the story with me. Everything sounded good. But then one thing she said actually got my, my mind working. She said, there's no business out there like this. And then I said, okay, that's, there's usually a reason for that. But more importantly, what's stopping you from continuing to start this business? And she said something to me that I found to be very profound and got me thinking about where I am today and talking about why I'm here giving you this, this video. She said to me, I have to finish my business plan. I said, okay, that's, that's fair. So when did you start? Oh, five months ago. And then I said, what's stopping you now? Well, I don't understand the financial piece. I have to hire a friend. I know somebody in getting their MBA that could help me. Again, she'd wasted almost six months of her life filling out documents and forms and writing things that, for all intents and purposes, is fiction. And that got me going. And then from that point forward, I started running into lots of other people who were going through the same part of the financial and entrepreneurial journey. What was the point? Well, it's very simple. What if I told you that there was a simpler way of getting your business off the ground and starting? What if I told you that I can simplify that mess, that path, that journey to four simple steps? Just four main areas you need, you need to focus on when you want to start a business and when you want to think about starting a business. Going from your idea to when you're actually interacting with customers. That's the thing. Over my 12, 13 year career, as a CPA, as a small business person, even starting my own entrepreneurial endeavors, I learned a lot about these processes, some of my failures, but some of my successes. I also interviewed and talked to a lot of other successful entrepreneurs who went through similar processes, and they were able to utilize their experiences to formulate these four main areas. I call them the four S's to small business success. It's relatively simple. These four S's are... Structure, strategy, systems, and sales. These four main areas are the one thing that you should focus on in order to increase the chances of you starting your business. Not only doing that, but also making the most money you possibly can in your business and eventually growing. That's the whole purpose of being in business. It's not to get investors and loans and everything else, even though that's part of the journey. 
The goal is to be self-sufficient. The whole idea, the concept of a business is to be self-sufficient. It's not about getting in money and not making any of your own. If you can't make your own money in your business, you go out of business, relatively. That's, that's the simple truth of it. So now the question then becomes, what are the four S's? Now, what does that mean and why do I, why do I bother? In lieu of a business plan, now, granted, I'm here talking about, I'm the anti-business plan guy. That's, that's, my, that's my platform. I think business plans are crap, and they're a waste of your time, especially when you want to put your money and your sweat and your energy into something that you really believe in your heart is the right thing to do. So here's the four S's in simplistic forms. Structure. The whole point, the whole part of the structure section is focusing on your idea. But more importantly, focusing on a problem that you want to solve. So I told Karen, I said, what's more important to you, even before you tell me the idea, is think about the problem you're solving. Don't fall in love with your idea. Don't tell me that's, that there's no one else out there doing this. That isn't, that's not important to me. What's important is, what problem are you solving? A lot of the big companies out there, even the smaller companies out there, they all started from that, from that vantage point. They started with solving a problem. You know why? Because people are, most, are more likely to come back to you if you solve their problem. People pay money to solve problems. There's only real two reasons why people spend money, why you're spending money. To solve a problem or to get a desired result. That's it. Otherwise, you put your money in your pocket. So, if you fall in love with solving a problem, you increase the chances of somebody actually wanting to give you money and at a high dollar value. Now, you can say, well, Avon, not every business out there solves problems. You're right. Some businesses don't solve problems. There are very few of them. And those businesses don't last very long. I'm, I'm willing to guarantee you that. You can email me. Just give me an example. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, will, I'll, be, I'll gladly give you a response to that and also debate you on that. But the reality is, most real businesses that last long term, they solve problems. And then as they get bigger, they solve more problems. And then they solve them on a grander scale or on a bigger, on a bigger level. So your goal is, for structure, is to fall in love with the idea with the problem you're solving and not the idea. Too many people do that and that's why they fail. They, they, they turn it into an emotional thing and love the, and love, the, love the business. But in reality, it's not doing anything. The Pet Rock is an example. The Chia Pet is an example. Those aren't businesses, they're products. The Snuggie's not a business, it's a product. You get it? Now the second is, again, just as important, it's called a strategy. Strategy, the importance of strategy is this. There are multiple facets in strategy, but the main part of strategy that's really important that you need to focus on is price. Now, for too often, you can ask anybody you know who started their own business, any entrepreneur, we tend to think that we want to spend less. We think we want to spend a lot less than what we want. Now, granted, if you focus on the first part of structure and solve a problem, the idea of price, the concept of price, becomes a myth. The reality is, when people spend a lot of money, they spend money because there's a problem that's being solved. Even if it's not as obvious to you and I, there was a problem underneath the purchase of that item. Here's an example. If price wasn't an issue, there's two examples I'm going to give you. If price wasn't an issue, then why do people drive BMWs and Mercedes and they go out and spend half a million dollars on Ferraris? Because you can go out and buy a Hyundai, or you can go buy a Kia, or buy a $10,000 car, right? Why do people spend five, six, seven, a thousand dollars on the red bottom Christian Louboutin shoes? Why do women do that? You can go easily buy shoes that look very similar to that by a lot of brands like Steve Madden for like a one twentieth of the price, even 50 bucks if you want. Why do people spend money on expensive purses? instead of going to the department store or even maybe even the dollar store and, buy, and find something that's a lot cheaper. You see what I mean? Price, the idea of price is a myth. But when a lot of entrepreneurs start, they think that everybody wants to spend less. And so they do, they make the, the cardinal mistake. And the number, one of the biggest mistakes they make that actually almost put them out of business and eventually leads to, them, to their failure is they don't charge enough money for the product or service. Now, if you're not solving a problem, then you become a commodity. And the idea of a commodity is the person purchasing your product or service can't tell the difference. Now here's an example of a commodity. When you buy gasoline and you go to, the, to buy gas for your car, your scooter, or whatever you're driving, right? I personally, and I'm sure you can either, you can't tell the difference 
between Shell Gasoline, BP, Exxon, I have no clue. So you know what I do? I look at the price. I make sure it meets the minimum standard that I need, which is about 91 or 93 for my gas tank for my car. And if it has that, if that's the lowest price, I'm going to go there. Understand? But if I want to buy a car, I know what I'm getting with a BMW. I have a general idea with a Mercedes. I know what I'm going to get with a Honda. I know what I'm going to get with a Hyundai. I know what I'm going to get with a Kia. So there are different levels of comfort, different levels of luxury. That's why people pay more money. That's why people pay more money for a house in a certain desired neighborhood. That's why people pay more money to send their kids to a certain school. You see what I mean? There's a value in there. There's a result that I want to get. There's a need that I want to be filled or a problem I want to have solved. The key is with strategy is if you solve a problem in your structure, the pricing that you charge can be higher. Last example with strategy. Say you own a business and in the middle of the night the pipes burst and they're flooding out your restaurant. Okay? The alarm goes off, you pick up the phone book or if anybody else is still using a phone book, you go to Google and you find a plumber. You ask the plumber, hey, can you come and shut this off? And part of your service also includes cleaning up the mess and making everything, make sure everything's pristine so when I come back the next morning or the next day, everything's tip-top shape. The plumber says, yes, we're one of the few businesses in your city that actually does this service. The rub is, I'm going to charge you $1,000 for that service. If you had called during the day, he, cut off, he, put up, he probably could have had at least 30 different companies willing to do that. They would have done it for a lot less, two, $300. But the reality is, what's more important to your business as a restaurant owner is that you can open up tomorrow morning. It's not that you can save five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars that night. You see what I mean? That's why the importance of solving problems resonates when it comes to starting your business, thinking about your business. So with your business idea, you need to think about what problem am I solving? And if I figure out what that problem is, I gotta figure out how I can charge the most from a price perspective. The third is systems. Now, with systems, a lot, of things, a lot of what befalls entrepreneurs or causes them problems is they don't have time. Now, I get it. you got kids, you have a husband, you have a wife, you have a spouse, you have a significant other, you have a job, you have other responsibilities. Now, how are you going to do all these things and then start a business on the side? That sounds crazy. Systems is thinking about a different way to bring in resources for a cheaper amount or for a lower cost of, for, for labor, right? This includes finding interns. This includes using websites like freelancer.com, taskrabbit.com. You can even use Craigslist. Finding people or finding virtual assistants to help do some of the non-revenue producing activities so you can focus on the things that will help you continue to grow your business. It allows you to scale. Now here's a, a, a bigger example, a macro example, okay? McDonald's is an example. I've traveled all over the world, been international, I've been to international countries, and as one example is I went to China. Going to China, and I bought a Big Mac, and I had a Big Mac meal. The Big Mac there tastes exactly the same and looked exactly the same as if I got it here in the D.C. area, if I got it in Kansas, or if I've got it in Texas. Now, the reason for that is there are procedures that are put in place to ensure the quality is preserved. It's the same. You go to any airport, any Starbucks in any country, the lattes you order all taste the same. The coffee you order tastes the same. Everything tastes the same. It's the same experience. And that's the key. That's the mistake that people have. They start growing too quickly or they don't have the right procedures in place and then everything suffers in other areas. So there's, there's inconsistency in delivering of your product and of your service. And that's one of the things that actually allow, causes entrepreneurs like you to fail. And then we're going to fix that. And that's what the point of systems is. Now sales. I mean, that is self-explanatory, right? You need sales in order to continue making money. And I told you earlier, the whole point of a business is to bring in money to be self-sufficient and not have to rely on investors or having to rely on other external things. But it's, it's deeper than that with sales. Again, going back, these all things work together. These four S's work together in concert. If you're solving a problem, and rather than falling in love with an idea, you can charge more money. It allows you to grow because you have a system in place to do so. And lastly, your sales are all about teaching and explaining things to people. So I'm a huge fan of content marketing. What's important about content marketing is you're giving information to people. You're helping them in their lives. 
no one wants to be sold anything. No one wants to be advertised to. People don't want people. Don't, you sell you sell products and services to people, not companies and corporations. There are people in there making decisions. Everything's a person you're selling to, not a machine. And so people want to feel individualized. They want to feel there's one. They want a sense of individualism, but more importantly, they want to learn. All the successful companies out there, even including the bigger ones, do a great job of teaching you things. So here's an example. You go to YouTube. A lot of people go to YouTube and Google. The main reason why you go to Google and YouTube is to find answers to something. Google even tells you. You go to Google and you pull it up. It says Google and one, everything's white and one search bar. And that's it. Type in anything you like. It'll help you find it. Google's not even trying to teach you or give you anything. They want to be the, the gatekeepers to show you there's a lot of things out there. You can find answers to. When people go to YouTube, some of the biggest and most popular videos on YouTube are one of two. Well, actually three. The first is those idiotic viral videos of cats playing pianos and, and people talking crazy and the auto-tune stuff and other viral type stuff that, that don't last very long but get a 10 million hits. The second, which a lot of people are starting to realize, is music videos. I get it. You want to see it, you'll see it when you want to, you don't have to go to MTV. It explains why a lot of these cable channels no longer play videos, because you can go find it on YouTube. The last, but the one that's more important for you and your business, is how-tos. There's a famous example of a woman, young lady, who, who's, who's known, Asian woman, who's now partnered with a major cosmetic company because of her YouTube videos. She taught people how to do makeup. Nice agent told you how to do the, the, the smoky eyes and all the, all the other stuff that you do for your face. And by teaching all this, she's grown a large, loyal following. Now she has the ability to scale and to, they, but more, or grow, but more importantly, share her, her, through her sharing her knowledge, she can also sell her products. It becomes an ancillary thing. It's not, hey, come into my store, let me sell you this TV. It's more like... Hey, you have some people who want to come over and watch a football game. Let me tell you about this TV and that TV and your stereo system. And this is the best way to get the best sound. You give me the, that kind of information, I'm more likely to purchase from you. That happens a lot of the times. It's not about hoarding information. Come in my store. Only when you come in my store will I give you information. It's more along the lines of, let me tell you about everything out there. Then you automatically become an expert. And that's the part of sale, that sales that's important. Now, why am I telling you all this before the four S's? Well, if you're on this page or seeing this video, you know that I have a book coming out in February called Start Me Up, The No Business Plan, Business Plan. Start Me Up, The No Business Plan, Business Plan focuses on the four S's to small business success. Through these, this is, the, this is basically the main way, the, the, the best way to start your business and guarantee get it off the ground and actually start to make money for your family, to achieve your dreams and your desires. You can spend your time writing a business plan and focusing on spreadsheets and numbers. Or you can focus on the four most important areas, the four most important areas in your business to get it off the ground. That's what this is about. It's about learning about what you need to do the best and quickest way to get going. It's all about being quick and being efficient at the same time. To tell you the story about Karen, so I told her quickly about the four S's. And after that, she's about taking notes on the plane. And as we landed, she's like, thank you so much. You literally saved me another six months of my time filling out the business plan. And the last time I spoke with her about a year ago, she already had her first and second, and she was on to her fourth customer. Now, you see, it just so happened I met her on the plane. But the reality is, a lot of people out there like you who want to start a business who want to start to make money, who want to start and actually realize a dream and desire in your heart. It's not that difficult. It may appear daunting, but the four S's to small business success in the book, Start Me Up the No Business Plan Business Plan, is actually going to walk you through. This is the best way for you to get your business off the ground. No more wasting time. No more gimmicks, no more business plans, no more hiring anybody to do anything. You can do this yourself. And in the book, I give you all the resources you need. More importantly, I also interviewed lots of regular entrepreneurs just like yourself who are in various stages of their entrepreneurial career 
who not only started their businesses or in the middle of their businesses or growing their businesses, but are providing feedback through the stories in the book, in addition to what you see here with the four S's, that can help give you encouragement. One of the main reasons why people quit on a lot of things is because there are barriers in their mind and in front of them. It's not physical. It's always mental and emotional. The whole goal of this book is threefold. One is to get you to get past the business plan idea and get your business off the ground. The second is to give you the mental, emotional encouragement that you need in order to get through those difficult times. And you find other people like you who can provide you with that. And the third is to give you actual guidance in using things like social media in your sales piece. Understanding the importance of Twitter. The importance of Facebook and Pinterest based on the kind of business you have. The importance of LinkedIn and Google+. Plus. It's very simple. It's a simpler way of getting your business off the ground. That's what this is about. Making things simpler makes it easier for you to absorb and com comprehend and, 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 and actually get going. There's no reason for you to be stalled. There's no reason for you to, to be waiting and to spend lots of money to get started. I'll walk you through the process with Start Me Up. I want to empower you and encourage you and to, and to tell you to start, to start today. Now, the American dream and the middle class are dying. The idea of you going to work with a hard hat and a pail, those days are over. 40, 50 years ago, the pension ideas are gone. People's 401ks are going up and down. And you probably want to raise. We just came out of a recession. Now, the more important thing for you to do is if you had an idea that you have experience in and you can become an expert in, would it, be, would it be better for you to be able to start something on your own on the side? Again, it's versatile. With these four steps, the four S's, you have a better chance of starting than if you were to follow a business plan. I guarantee you that. Okay, so now here's the, here's the thing. Since you're on this page, what I really want to do with, with everybody who's watching this is do me a favor and give me your email address and stay in touch. I want you to join uh, my email group. Now, this group is going to be, the, the book comes out February 25th, 2014, okay? Still in the middle of editing, still in the middle of, of the publisher, still in the middle of getting, getting everything together. However, leading up to this, in the next month or two, probably in about January, mid to late January, I'm going to start releasing videos. And some of these videos are going to, and I, only to the email list, only people who are on this list are going to get copies of the videos. They're not going to be on YouTube, right? You're going to get full 10, 15 minute videos or, or more than that, depending on the nature of what we talk about. But walking you through the four S's. So by watching these videos, you'll get a better understanding as to what can... Right now, you've probably even got a, an idea to do something you can start with. You can get going with your business. Now, the whole goal is to give you the video training that you need in order to encourage you and to help improve your chances of success. That's what this is about. So do me a favor, please. Give me your email address below and join the email, email group. And only you, people who are in that group, were the only ones who have access to that video. And leading up to the time the book comes out. So when the book comes out, I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be doing book tours. And I'm really excited about this, about this passion and, and this idea to help people. I do a lot of talks, a lot of seminars. I do a lot of speeches for a lot of different groups, minority groups, women groups, entrepreneurial groups, veteran groups. And I'm trying to talk. This is my message. The idea of a business plan is crap. It's gone. It's out the window. It's antiquated. It's old. The four S's is what we need to focus on. And Start Me Up, the No Business Plan Business Plan, is the best way that you can get your business off the ground. It's the best way to realize your dreams. More importantly, it's the best way to take control of your financial and entrepreneurial journey. So again, do me a huge favor. Give me your email address below. Join the group so you can have access to these new videos that are coming out. Also, access to a lot of other things that I'm going to be putting out, content I'm going to be putting out later on. Teaching you things. Teaching you the importance of Twitter and the importance of Facebook and LinkedIn. Giving you different tips and tricks in order to increase your followers, increase your memberships, increase your fans, and other ideas for selling and content marketing. It's really important that this happens. So again, put your email address below. Join the group. You can have access to great content. You can reach out to me, you can email me, we'd love to hear from you and hear your story, and we can definitely talk, and I've been helping people along the way leading up to the book, and I'm going to start doing a lot of Google Hangouts and a lot of Spreecasts and other seminars to talk about what, what, what this is about. 
more about engagement. So stay in touch. Again, your email address below. Join the group for access to the to videos that are coming out soon. And again, I'm so excited for you. You have everything you need. You have everything you need right now within you to start your business and to get your business off the ground and start making money in your business. Now, Start Me Up, the No Business Plan Business Plan is the one last resource and tool that you need in order, for that to, in order to make that happen and make that a reality. I'm here to help you.